Vic presents the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory. Vic, the makers of Vic's Vapor Rub, Vic's Vapronol, Vic's Cough Drops, and Vic's Inhaler brings you the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory as Stephen Auger and featuring Helen Clare as Loxy Clareborn in the play which you selected for this week. It's a lusty tale of love and ships and the old-time wreckers of the Florida Keys. Reap the wild wind. Now, here's a good thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks Vaporub. And now, Act One, Thelma Strabel's romantic story, Reap the Wild Wind. Key West, in the year 1835, a tropical island at the very end of the long, treacherous necklace of reefs that string out from the Florida Peninsula into the Atlantic. And here stands the house of proud, wealthy Matthew Clareborn, whose salvaged ships brave the storms to save any vessel that crashes against the jagged rocks. In her bedroom right now, Loxy, the beautiful daughter of the Clareborn family, is dressing for a dance. Suddenly, Loxy turns to Mom Maria, the woman who's raised her from childhood. Well, Mom Maria, why don't you say something? Am I beautiful? You wouldn't be looking in the mirror so long if you wasn't. <laughs> Do you think I could marry any man downstairs tonight? Any man. It ain't too old to notice the smallest waist in all the South, and eyes that's as deep and green as the sea, but you are born hussy. Do you really think so? And I wish you were still small enough so I could pad you like I used to. <laughs> I reckon I showed them, everybody back there in Charleston. All I have to do is snap my fingers and Stephen Auger, the brilliant young maritime lawyer, comes begging for my attention. Before the evening's over, I wouldn't be surprised if he proposed to me. I'd be careful what I was getting into, child. Oh, I can handle Stephen. I wonder how it would turn out if I said yes. No, you ain't going I'm to... not saying yes and I'm not saying no. I'll <laughs> just wait and see how I feel when it happens. There's no need for me to come to Key West all, Mr. Clevin. My, my clients have nothing to worry about. You and your, your colleagues have made reckon an honest and an honorable profession. Thank you, Mr. Doji. Try to be of real service to shipping, sir. And there's no, no doubt that you and your father succeeded, Dan. <laughs> but if I had my choice, Mr. O.J., I'd be out there in every storm with, with my two feet planted on the deck. Here, enough of that, son. You have your place in the warehouse. Let's have no more argument about it. Yes, Father. Oh, there you are, gentlemen. Well, well, Loxy, my dear. Still the trimmest craft in these or any other words. I agree with that. Why, thank you, Stevie. Well, I'm sure you young people like to dance, and I'm afraid I've been neglecting now other guests. Excuse me. Yes, yes Father. Certainly, sir. You were late come coming downstairs. You knew I was waiting. Wasn't it worth it? You're beautiful tonight, Loxy. And... There's so much I want to tell you. Yes? Yes. But it'll keep till after the dance. May I have the honor, Miss Clever? <laughs> oh, Stephen, you dance beautifully, but you have no sense of direction. Yeah, that's a common feeling of the old days. We dance quite sanely for a while, and then we inevitably waltz through a door and end up in the garden. But what will people think? Do you care? No, I can't say that I do. You know why I brought you out here, don't you? I haven't the slightest idea. I think you have. You've known all along that I love you. Of course you don't mean a word you say. Now don't play with me, Loxy. It doesn't become you. You mean I'm not one of your fine Charleston ladies? No, and thank heaven for it. You're as free and wild as that ocean out there. I've 
seen you stand on the prow of your father's prize wrecker with a spray beating against your face and smiling defiance as the boat headed toward the jagged reefs. You are loxy. And you make every other woman I've ever met look as insipid as orange water. Stephen. Be honest with me. Do you love me? Stephen, I... I can't say. Surely you should know by now. You're holding me so close. I want your answer. And I know you'll give it to me straight. Very well, Stephen. I tried to make you fall in love with me. But I never wanted to hurt you. It all started last summer when I visited my father's cousin in Charleston. All the girls there poked fun at me. I heard them snickering and saying that I walked across the ballroom as though it were the deck of a ship. To them, I was a... a pirate's daughter. Poor little Loxy. I just waited for a chance to show them all. Uh, what do you mean? You were the one man that every woman in Charleston was talking about. They said any girl who could get you would have every right to boast. You were the catch of the town. And is that all I've meant to you? I... I'm sorry. You needn't trouble yourself to be. I thought there'd be more satisfaction to it than there is. You did very well. I'm going back to Charleston, but not without this souvenir from Key West. Don't... Do you think a childish schoolboy kiss could make me feel any different? No, I don't suppose so. Loxy, I'm going, but I'll be back. I'm a very patient man. I, I can wait. Oh, Miss Loxy. Miss Loxy, Mr. Stevens. What is it, Mama Maria? Uh, if you know what's good for you two, you'll get in the house. There's a hurricane coming up sure now. We'd better go inside, I gotta Stephen. see that everything is locked up yes, tight. Yes, I guess we better go in. There's nothing much a lawyer can do at a time like this, except perhaps wait till he gets back to Charleston and lick his wounds. to that wind. It's like something alive and ruthless in the night. You're not afraid of being alone here with someone who's practically no better than a savage? Loxy, we're destined to be together. <laughs> Even a full-blown hurricane has to be arranged for the occasion. Rancashaw! Rancashaw! Did you hear that? Yes, I've heard it all my life. Rancashaw! I wish Rancashaw! I were a man and could be out there. You think it's a pretty tame, colorless thing to be a lawyer, huh? Suits certain people. And that kind of love is something that doesn't excite you, does it? What do you think love is, Loxy? Love? Hmm? I think love should be something grand and wild, like that hurricane outside. Well, there's still another kind of love. It's quiet and abiding and uh, constant. It's strong enough to survive the storms and exciting enough to make calm weather interesting. In a way, it's the rarest form of love, for it comes only when two people have no doubts at all about themselves. When their love is past the crisis. It's the kind of love, Loxy, that, uh, that's worth waiting for and fighting for. It's the kind of love that'll be strong enough after the hurricane and this night are over. Maybe, Stephen. Let's go down to the wall. Perhaps we can help. Doctor, you'll have to get some guest rooms ready and call a doctor. What's the matter, Father? What's wrong? We have four injured men from the Jubilee. She was the wreck. Oh. A full-rigged ship out of New Bedford. Yes, of course I'll help. Yeah, I'll give you a hand with them, too, sir. Uh, Captain Babcock of the Jubilee insisted on coming over to see you, Father. I'm all right. It's just my leg that's hurt. I don't know why I was taking off my ship. What? Oh, this is my daughter, Loxy, Captain Babcock. Your daughter? I hope I didn't frighten you that much. Frighten me? I... I saw you standing there with the light on your hair. And I thought I saw... I thought I saw... He's fainting. Yes. Oh, Father, he's fainting. Yes. Here, help me to get him to the house. The way he looked at me. Yes, I noticed. Seems the hurricane left more damage than I thought, Loxy. And I expect to stay around until it's all cleared up. How's the handsome captain this morning, Loxy? He's coming along, the doctor said. He doesn't seem too anxious to leave his beautiful nurse. Mm, not any more anxious than a certain lawyer who was supposed to have left for Charleston a week ago. Uh -huh. You have an idea I'm falling in love with him, and you're just a little bit jealous. More than a little bit. 
That's a smug, self-satisfied smirk on your face, Mr. O.J., and I don't like it. Why shouldn't I fall in love with the captain? He's everything I want in a man. He loves ships and the sea. He's handsome and exciting. And more important, he needs me. It wasn't his fault that he shipped the Jubilee, smashed against the reef, and they took his command away from him. That is too bad. I'm sorry. Sincerely. Anyway, he's waiting for me in the garden. Here's your hat, Miss Doge. The Key West sun is very strong. Fortunately, I have a rather tough skin. Good day, Miss Clevin. I'm glad you're looking so much better, Jack. Never mind me. You look worried, Loxy. I am. My brother Dan signed on his mate on Captain Cutler's ship, the Falcon, and father's furious. Your brother's a smart lad. He'll take care of himself. But it's too beautiful here to talk about to anybody but us. Loxy, nights when I'm standing on deck alone, I'll be seeing you the way you're standing here now. And right there in the middle of the ocean, I'll be smelling orange blossoms. I'll be remembering you too, Jack. It got into my blood like the sea. Don't you know that? You can't help feeling it, Loxy. Fate drove my ship on a reef to bring me to you, and I'm going to have you if I have to pay the devil for it. You mustn't say that. I'm only a captain who lost his ship, and I can't ask you to wait for me. But you will wait. That Charleston lawyer will be after you to marry him. But I won't let you. I belong with somebody who loves the sea the way I do. You belong to me, Loxy. I know it's madness I'm talking, but that's the way I feel. I felt it the night I first saw you, and I thought I was seeing a vision from that blow on my head. Maybe my head's never been right since, and that's why I talk like this. Then I guess I'm slightly mad, too. Will you wait for me, Loxy? Wait for you? <laughs> You're in for a surprise, Jack. <laughs> Loxy. I had to see you, Jack. But we're ready to sail any minute. I'm going to Havana with you. We'll get married there. So that's the surprise you meant. But you don't know what you're letting yourself in for. I'm not a captain any longer. I'm just first officer on this old town. Did you think that would make any difference to me? That's what I wanted to hear you say. We will go to Havana together. I'm afraid it's not going to be as easy as that. What? Stephen. Mom Maria told me you'd pack your bag and to come down to the boat. What business is that of yours? Get off this boat, Loxy. You can't order me around this way. You're not going to do this to yourself, Loxy. Who's going to suffer? I am. How? I'll show you. You, you hit him. Yes, ma'am. Uh, put me down. Put me down. We've got to get off of here. The ship's moving. It's too late. No. What are you doing? Put me down. Off the board you go. Ah! I'm right with you, Loxy. Right with you. Take it easy now. I've got you. You. Shut up. You'll be sorry for this, Mr. O'Shea. Only a few more yards to the wharf. Now. Here we are. Up you come. Look at me. Soaking wet. And I'm sorry about your dress, but it's easier replaced than a reputation. Oh. Now, Mom Marie is waiting for you at the carriage. A hot bath and a hot toddy will straighten you out. I'll never forgive you for this. Someday you'll thank me. What right do you have to go around interfering in other people's lives? Oh, I hate you. I hate you. You'll probably hate me even more, Loxy. I'd, I'd give anything not to have to say this. But I received a letter from Charleston today. What does that have to do with me? Great deal, Loxy. Really? Your brother will have to stand trial. As mate of the Falcon, he's accused of conspiring with an officer of another ship to defraud my client. Excessive rates of salvage. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I must go ahead and prosecute. You're doing this to get even with me. You arranged all this. You're glad it happened. Loxy, listen to you me. You are glad, aren't you? Aren't you? I hope that made you feel better. I'm sorry I did that. But Dan's not dishonest. I ought to know my own brother. Loxy. Don't shame him. Please don't disgrace Loxie, him. Loxy, listen. You told me once you'd die for your brother. Well, I would give my life for you. I wish what you asked were as easy as that because... I love you. Huh, love me. Yes, love you. But I won't betray my duty as a lawyer. That's one thing I can't do. I'm sorry I humbled myself to beg your help. I'll never ask anything of you again. But I may as well warn you, Mr. O'Shea, it's dangerous business when you try to disgrace a Claiborne in Key West. Every wrecker, every pilot, every fisherman here knows my brother and likes him. They won't stand by and see an outsider come in and... Are you threatening me? No. 
just giving you a piece of good advice. If you go into that courtroom, you're not likely to leave this island alive. Are you still going through with it? Yes, Loxy. I'm still going through with it. In just a moment, Act Two of Reap the Wild Wind, starring Victor Jory. Reports from all sections of the country show that contagious colds are spreading. They're causing untold misery everywhere, so watch out. And if a cold does strike, here's some mighty good advice. Advice that's based on the personal experience of millions of thankful folks. Rub Vicks Vapor Rub on the throat, chest, and back and notice what happens. It's the modern way so widely used these days to ease distress of colds. Because the moment you rub it on, VapoRub's relief-giving action goes right to work to help relieve congestion and irritation in the upper breathing passages, to ease the coughing spasms, sore throat, and that muscular soreness or tightness. VapoRub penetrates, penetrates into the cold, congested upper bronchial tubes with its special soothing medicinal vapors. And at the same time, it stimulates, stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting, warming poultice. And this penetrating, stimulating action of vapor rub keeps on working for hours to bring such wonderful, welcome relief. And remember this, only vapor rub gives you this important, special, penetrating, stimulating action. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds, Vicks Vapor Rub. Now the curtain rises for Act Two of Reap the Wild Wind, starring Victor Jory. The small courthouse in Key West is crowded today. The Charleston lawyer, Stephen Ogier, is prosecuting the son of one of the oldest families on the island. The charge? A fraudulent agreement with the captain of a vessel to receive an exorbitant salvage fee. Right now, Stephen Ogier is completing his summation against young Claiborne. Gentlemen... Your Honor, we Americans are a vital and adventurous people, but bravery is not far from recklessness. The thing in our very blood that defies savages and hunger and hurricanes can also turn us to defiance of the law, as it did Daniel Claiborne. But only the law and respect for the law can make us truly great, can lift us above the ranks of mere exploiters and adventurers to be the proud citizens of the mightiest nation upon this earth. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen, perhaps all I've said seems irrelevant in this rather cut-and-dried case, but perhaps it'll help you judge Dan Claiborne with a little more understanding and true justice. I hope so. It is the judgment of this court where there is convincing evidence of fraud on the part of Dan Claiborne. The owners are entitled to recover the value of all cargo delivered for salvage. Loxy! Don't stop walking. Let me stay close to you. Yes? Please. The streets are so dark and you're in danger. I told you you couldn't disgrace a claim and not suffer for it. They're waiting for you down the road. But if I walk beside you, Claiborne, nothing will happen to you. Isn't this a sudden change of heart? I see now. You couldn't go back on your word, your duty. Loxie, why are you doing all this? Why? Yes. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Mrs. Stevens, I done done the worst thing in the world. Yes, Ma Marie? I took this here letter Captain Jack wrote to Miss Loxley from the draw and went and read it. Well, you shouldn't be too lawyer of that. Interfering with the mails. It say I'm coming back to you, Loxley, dog, with my pockets bulging with gold. And it won't be long now 
Because I'm working on something that'll bring us together sooner than you think. Well, Mom, what do you expect me to do about that? Oh, I ain't telling you what to do, Mr. Stevens. But I know you love that gal. And, Mr. Stevens, tomorrow Miss Locks is going on a little pleasure trip to Indian Key. Tomorrow? On the Polaris with Captain Murray. Now, I thought that if maybe you should take it in your mind. Enjoying yourself, Miss Loxy? Oh, two full, clean days of water all around us, Captain Murray. Time to think. Time enough to make a person decide his whole life, isn't it? Stephen. <clears throat> oh, I, I forgot to, to tell you, Miss Loxy, we have an extra passenger this trip. Now, I, I better see the cook about some lunch. Steamed green turtles from the Tortugas, fried plants. Some people always seem to be setting me before you, Miss Clevin, like a dish for which you have no fancy, huh? It's a large boat. I think we can manage to keep out of each other's way. Wait a minute, Loxy. It... Well? Well, when we come back to Key West, I'm leaving for Charleston. I really mean it this time. I'm leaving. I, I want this trip to be something I can remember for the rest of my life. All right? I don't suppose there's anything I can do about it anyway. Not a thing. I have never seen such beauty. Oh, I mean the scenery, of course. Never seen such beauty. I think I've come to understand why you people live on the Keys, love it so deeply be a crime to want to tear you away from here. You'd always be homesick. Look, those birds flying so low. Mm -hmm. Captain Murray, do you see those birds? Oh, yes, Miss Loxy. I see them all right. Means we're in for a storm, a bad one. Loxy, you better get below. No, I want watchers. No, no, don't be a little fool. Don't now. waste your time arguing, Mr. O'Shea. Just hold on to it. Of course, if you're afraid, Mr. O'Shea, you can use my cabin. For once, I'm going to hold you close to me and protect you as I've always wanted. <laughs> A little, perhaps. I'm a landsman. This storm's pretty bad, you know. If this wind doesn't die down, we'll wind up on the reefs. I might say it'd be a pleasure to die with you. You speak like a Charleston dandy. I almost forgot you are that. We are each of us many persons, Loxy. Sometimes we spend our lives trying to decide who we are. I don't need your arm. I can stand alone. My arm belongs around you. Why do you think I followed you here? I... <laughs> Loxy... Oh, why didn't you go to Charleston? Why didn't you leave me alone? <laughs> Miss Loxy, Mr. O'Shea. I'm sure glad this blow is over. We're all right, Captain Murray. Rickershaw! Rickershaw! Rickershaw? Oh, yes. Hmm? Look, over there on Alligator Reef. Yes. Yes, I can see it. It's that uh, big full rigged vessel we saw before. I thought it was funny how any captain would let his ship sail so close to the reefs. Can you see your name, Tom? Ah, Captain! It's the rising sun! Do you know her? He's an Elson ship, sir. Steady, Locks. He drove her deliberately on the reef, passengers and all. Oh, no. Must have made a salvage deal with someone. That's as bad as piracy. How could Jack do it, Stephen? How could now, he? Now, why don't we find out what's behind all this before we judge it? Oh, she's breaking up fast. We've got to get there. Crowd on all sails! Crowd on all sails! <laughs> I'm almost sorry Captain Murray saved you. You put your ship on the reef purposely. No, I didn't. You put her there, and you arranged with Captain Cutler of the Falcon to meet you. He was a little late. The storm held him up. You don't know what you're talking about. It was that storm that drove us yes, on the Yes, Babcock, that unexpected storm made it a real wreck. You didn't mean to lose your vessel. You would have put her ashore skillfully enough to hold her there hard and fast so all the cargo could be taken off. And then you'd have gone into court and handled everything properly and legally. But... A share of the salvage would have gone into your pocket. And it's a large and valuable cargo. You're lying, O.J. You know it. You're just saying that because you want Loxy for yourself. You were off your course, Jack. Way off. All right, I was. But it's for you, Loxy. I'm mad about you. You know that. With my share of the salvage money, I could have bought a half interest in a schooner and made a fortune for you. Do you think I could live on that kind of money? 
If I had 40 servants and solid gold plate, do you think I'd be happy? Oh, get out. Get out. Roxy, get listen. out of my sight. I guess they were right about me in Charleston. No better than a pirate's daughter. Our white sails already stained. You're wrong, so wrong, Loxy. All the rest of your life depends on how you face this moment. Remember, for every Babcock and Cutler, there'll always be a Captain Murray, and for every Thieve and Falcon, there'll always be a gallant Polaris to challenge the hurricane. Always. Always, Loxy. Thank you, Stephen. Loxy, when I held you close to me out there on the deck, I knew there was no storm wild enough to tear us apart. Didn't you feel that? Why did it take me so long to understand that I loved you, Stephen? Why it took you so long doesn't matter now. This is all that matters. Oh, Stephen, my darling. Ah, oh, Loxy. What was it again you said about your love for me? I didn't understand then, but now I can. Well, there's a kind of love, Loxy, that's serene, abiding, and constant. It's the rarest sort of love, Loxy, for it comes only when two people have weathered the storm and the wild wind. <laughs> just a moment, a word from Victor Jory. When you can do yourself a great big favor and at the same time help win a war, that's quite a trick. Well, that's exactly what you do every time you buy a war bond and put it away to keep. So let's stop kidding ourselves that we're sacrificing when we buy these bonds. There's $4 coming back for every $3 we invest. All that money coming back after the war when we can buy things we can't get now, like new cars, electric refrigerators, and whatever you want. And you know, it's the regular buyers of war bonds who will profit most. Those who put so much every week or every month into war bonds. It's wonderful how they pile up. If your company or firm has a payroll savings plan and you're not in it, sign up tomorrow for all you can swing. And if you're already buying war bonds on the payroll savings plan... Why not sit down now and figure out a way to hike up the amount? This is Victor Jory. Today's play, Reap the Wild Wind, which you helped me to select, was recorded and will be played for the American prisoners of war in Germany. It'll reach them under the sponsorship of the National War Council of the YMCA. Now I'd uh, like to ask you to help us decide about next week's matinee theater production. We have three wonderful stories in mind from the studios of David O. Selznick, whose next big picture is I'll Be Seeing You. We offer the tender story which starred Ingrid Bergman and Leslie Howard, Intermezzo. Many of you have already have asked for James Hilton's Goodbye, Mr. Chips. And others would like to hear The Petrified Forest. Now then, you help me make the choice. It's between Intermezzo, Goodbye, Mr. Chips, and The Petrified Forest. Write me care of the Columbia Broadcasting System, New York 22, New York. And please, do as Mr. Marble suggested. Buy bonds. Our script today was adapted by David Vick and Herbert Little, Jr., for the best-selling novel by Thelma Strabel and was directed by Richard Sandville. Music for this series is under the direction of Mark Warno. Be sure to be with us next week when Vicks, the makers of Vicks VapoRub, Vicks Vatronol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler brings you another great matinee theater production starring Victor Jory. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>